Hello again and welcome back to our course on Visio 2013. You should be getting to be pretty good at drawing shapes now, at moving them around, repositioning them, at resizing them and at aligning them with each other. The next thing you're going to learn how to do in Visio is to connect shapes together. And in this section we're going to concentrate on connecting shapes with lines to begin with. Now I've currently got course file 5 open and we're going to connect the two straightforward shapes in this drawing first of all just using a straight line. Now in order to do that what we're going to do is to use the line tool which is on the home tab in the tools group we saw this earlier on so let me select the line tool now I'm going to move the cursor over the drawing Note the little line next to the cross of the cursor indicating that I have the line tool selected. And watch what happens as I approach that rectangle. As I get close to it, what happens is that some little connection points appear. And although, in fact, I can connect this rectangle pretty much anywhere I like, if I want a simple way of connecting it to something else, if I choose one of these connection points, it is a very straightforward process. So let me choose, say, this one over here on the right. And as I get very close to it, you see that sort of green box appear. And you'll also see the screen tip that appeared there, glue to connection point. Let me just bring that up again. Now if I click, what's now happened is that one end of my line has been glued to the connection point. Now let me drag over to the hexagon over here on the right. You'll see those little connection points appear. And then when I get close enough to one of them, it says glue to connection point. Release the mouse. And I now have a line connecting those two shapes. And the line is glued at both ends. Now before we move on to other variations on this, let me just show you some of the significance of the line being glued. Let me change to the pointer tool, grab hold of the hexagon and move it. And of course the line that connects the hexagon to the rectangle adjusts itself accordingly so that the two shapes are still glued together. So of course that's a very important aspect of the fact that the two shapes are glued together. Now one thing that's very useful when you're connecting shapes together is to be able to recognize how the connecting lines and the shapes are actually connected. They won't always be glued in the way that they are in this example. This is an example of what we call static glue. And if you look carefully at the ends of the line, if you can't see any ends on the line, then just click on the line to select it. In fact, I'll just show you now. If I click on the rectangle on the left, the rectangle is selected and I can see its handles. If I click on the line, I'll see the connectors at the ends of the line. Now, as you'll see in a little while, that's probably not all you're going to see on a line. But for the moment, the originating end of the line has a green circle and the other end, the terminating end, the destination end has a handle in the form of a white circle with a green dot in it and these are the normal symbols that you'll see when you're dealing with what's called static glue. Let me just go up to the tools again and I'm just going to draw a line that isn't actually connecting anything at the moment. I'm just going to draw a line above these two. Release the mouse. And if you look carefully at that, you'll see that the handles at the end of that line are completely different. On the originating end, you've got a white square. And on the destination end, you've got a solid grey square. So again, that's an indication of the status of that line. It's not actually gluing anything at the moment. Now there's a completely different type of glue called dynamic glue that we're going to look at shortly. Now there are various ways in which connecting shapes together can get quite a bit more complicated and the use of these icons as a good visual clue to what's going on you're going to find to be very important. Let me sort of do something rather badly here and just show you how useful the icons can be. 
I've got my line tool selected and I'm going to hover over the smaller rectangle just where one of the connection points is you can see the screen tip there glued to connection point and I'm going to try to connect the smaller rectangle to the bigger one but I'm actually going to do it badly I'm going to do it wrong so I've got one end connected now if I go to the bigger rectangle there are various points where screen tips come up glued to geometry I've actually got no connection points on there but I could still glue the line the destination end of the line to the geometry of the rectangle I'll explain a little bit more to, about that in a moment but if I go say inside the body of it to just some random point say that one and release the mouse note that the originating end of the line has that green circle but the destination end has the rectangle that indicates that it's not actually glued so if I get hold of the pointer tool and move that big rectangle you'll find that it wasn't actually glued so that's a very important thing to watch out for so let's go back to our straightforward connector again which is connecting the small rectangle to the hexagon one of the problems with that kind of connector is that if I'm in a pretty complex drawing drawing connectors as straight lines can create its own problem so for instance if I take the hexagon and it needs to be moved for some other reason so that the line runs behind the big rectangle which is not a problem as such it can become very difficult to work out whether there is actually a connector involved in the big rectangle in some way now we know that there is no connection involving the big rectangle because you saw me move the hexagon just now but somebody looking at a big complex drawing won't necessarily be able to realize that kind of thing so what we tend to do is to draw connections that go around obstacles now there are various ways of doing this I'm going to show you a quite manual way of doing it first let me remove the connector that we've currently got so select and delete and instead of using a straight line I'm going to click on freeform in the tools and I'm going to draw a freeform connector start as usual end as usual there we are I've got those two shapes connected but they're now connected by a freeform shape now let me use the pointer tool again let me move the hexagon now I don't want to give you the impression there that Visio has automatically worked out how to just avoid that big rectangle in the middle because it hasn't but it does maintain the connection and in some cases that can be quite a neat and simple way of moving around obstacles now when I first drew that freeform you may have noticed some little handles on it you won't see those handles now and in fact if I click on that freeform line you can't see the handle still but if instead of choosing the pointer tool I choose the freeform tool again you'll see those little handles there are about four or five of them on there exactly how many will depend on the size length of the shape but with those selected I can actually reshape my freeform line so if I needed to do something a little bit cleverer to get round an obstacle then that is one way of doing it using in this case a freeform connector so that's a pretty neat but quite manual way of connecting shapes together and avoiding obstacles but there is another more intelligent tool that we can use which is called a dynamic connector and a dynamic connector uses what's called dynamic glue and it also automatically avoids obstacles now dynamic connectors are a great tool in Visio 2013 but you do need to understand pretty well what's going on or they can become somewhat frustrating as I'm sure at some stage you'll discover 
So let me remove my freeform connector here. I just need to select it, press the delete key. Let me now click on connector under the pointer tool. And then what I'm going to do first is to hover over one of the connectors on the small rectangle. And then I'm going to go down to one of the connectors on the hexagon. And I now have a dynamic connection. And don't worry too much about the glue at the moment. I'll come back to the glue in just a moment. But you notice that it is automatically avoided that rectangle. Now let me just do that again, but let me just sort of run through the middle of the rectangle so you don't get the impression that I was cheating. Now, apart from the fact that it avoids the rectangle, let's see what happens if I move the rectangle. Suppose I move the rectangle down to there, say you see that the connector will redraw itself. Now it doesn't always redraw itself in the most wonderful way. And as I said just now, you may sometimes find these connectors can be quite frustrating. But a lot of the time it does a pretty good job of avoiding obstacles. Now there are one or two things that you can do when you've got a dynamic connector in place if you don't like how the connector is running. So for instance, if I select the connector here You'll see there's a little handle halfway up here on this line. I could pull that over that way a little bit if I preferred it to be there. For instance, if I was planning to put another shape in here. I could grab that handle halfway along that line, perhaps pull that down there. Maybe move this across here. So you can manually adjust the connector pretty much in any way that you like. And in fact, with the connector selected, if you right click on the connector, one of the options is reset connector and it puts it back pretty much to how it was at the beginning. Now what I'm going to do is to move the large rectangle out of the way for the moment and concentrate on using those two smaller shapes. I'm going to select and remove the connection that's already there. I'm going to move the shapes nearer to each other. And when I connected those just now using the dynamic connector, it actually used static glue because I connected via two connection points. Let me just demonstrate that again. Let's say take the middle of the right edge of the rectangle and connect it to the middle left connection point on the hexagon. If I subsequently move them around, let me just get the point at all, let's put the rectangle over the other side. They will stay connected using the same connection points, even though that means that the line has got to do a bit of a sort of circuit around the two shapes. If instead of connecting them by connection points, I'd actually connected them using the shapes, I would have a dynamic glued connection. I'll be using dynamic glue. Let me just show you what that looks like. So connector again. This time I'm going to hover over the edge of the first shape. And when I do that, you can see that I get the shape outlined in green, but I don't have a connection point highlighted. Now if I go over to the hexagon, and again, don't choose a connection point, but just go until it says glue to shape. Release. And the two are connected together now, but they are connected as shapes, not via connection points. Now watch what happens if I move the rectangle over to the right of the hexagon. Visio 2013 basically uses the most convenient route connecting the two together and no matter how I orientate them it will choose what it considers to be the most efficient way of getting from one shape to the other. So that's the use of dynamic glue. Now although I've used dynamic glue there 
it looks the same as if I'd used static glue. And if you use an earlier version of Visio, you may be used to those two types of glue looking different. Well, in Visio 2013, there is no distinction now, but you can certainly see the difference in behavior between using static glue and dynamic glue. Now, as we work through the course, we're going to be using dynamic and, for that matter, static connectors quite extensively. And I've still got quite a few more things to tell you about them. But for the moment, that's certainly enough to get you started. Although there is one other point I need to quickly go over with you. I mentioned earlier on in this section the option glue to geometry. And I've talked about glue to shape and glue to connectors. If you go to the View tab, and look at the visual aids group there's a little dialog box launcher that I used much earlier on in the course when we looked at snapping well if you click on that there's also there a definition of the gluing options and you can see the gluing options that I've got set here on the right and they don't include gluing to connection points at the moment you need to check what yours are set to but normally I have mine set at shape geometry guides and connection points and that will determine what I can glue to so if I want to be able to glue to either connection points or generally to a shape in the way that I showed you just now you need to make sure that the top and the bottom options at least are selected with those selected if I then want for example to connect by a dynamic connector if I hover over one shape I'll see a connection point if I just hover generally into this shape but not at a particular connection point glue to shape that's fine then let me just go connect the point at all as you've seen already I will continue to be glued to this connection point the middle right one on the rectangle but if I move the rectangle around the glue on the hexagon can move around as well but not on the rectangle. But you need to make sure that you have those glue options set correctly. That's the end of this section. Please join me in the next one. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to the Simon Says It channel here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button right over there. If you're interested in taking your Office 2013 training to the next level, you can get over 70 hours of Microsoft Office 2013 training offered by Simon Says It. Just check out the About section below this video with more details. We'll see you next week with additional videos.